so I've been playing a lot of pretty good games recently. Uh, RZ came out a few months ago, excellent game there. Played, uh, played Disco Elysium, phenomenal experience. Really, really gives me hope for what the future of storytelling in video games is gonna be like. Uh, finally got around to beating Persona 2 Innocent Sin after dropping it like a decade ago. Well, lots of things to say about all of these great games. But enough about all of that garbage. Plumbers don't wear ties! <laughs> You know, perhaps something can be worked out after all. Yes? Take your clothes off, Jane. Okay, so here's a quick history lesson for those not in the know. 2009. The Angry Video Game Nerd does an episode on a weird, obscure 3DO game that was, at the time, about as old as that video is now. Any old in the audience looking to jump into their coffins yet? 2024. Limited Run Games ports this weird and obscure slideshow game into Unity, throws it up on PSN and only PSN. I don't know why the Steam version isn't out already, that mm. seems kind of weird. This video is like a month late, because I tend to go back and forth on whether or not there's a point to making any of these videos, whether I'm adding anything to the discourse, or whether my opinions are even really worth a damn. The jury's still out on that one, but even after all that deliberation, I predict that this video is still gonna go up before LRG drops the Steam version, and I think that's worth noting. There's been a trend in recent years of boutique movie labels getting the rights to random old obscure movies and re-releasing them in the highest fidelity possible. Like, god, I own get of it on Blu-ray. What are we doing? Not to say that the movies these labels are putting out are all garbage or anything, but there's definitely been an uptick in the market for this kind of stuff with the rise of YouTube series like Best of the Worst and its ilk. That's not really what Limited Run Games is, though they've been sort of leaning into putting out stuff like that lately. My first exposure to LRG was seeing a PS4 copy of Risk of Rain in a local gaming store years ago. It seemed like a cool idea back then, having small print runs for indie games that would never get physical copies under normal circumstances. It's a little less cool when big companies like Ubisoft and Microsoft are letting somebody else do limited collector's editions of their games because they can't be bothered to do a normal print run themselves, but I digress. So, I haven't really been on the LRG shit for a while, but back during E3 2021, I was actually pretty excited to see that they were going to re-release Plumbers Don't Wear Ties by the end of the year. Clearly, that didn't end up happening, and so the game basically spent the next two and a half years in limbo, alternating between delays and periods of radio silence. Was it worth the three year wait? No, but I knew what I was getting myself into here, so I only have myself to blame. If you've seen the AVGN episode, which you almost certainly have, that's the only reason anybody knows about this game, then you probably know what Plumbers is already, but in case little Billy only just got his iPad yesterday, yeah! Plumbers is a weird pseudo-FMV interactive romantic comedy where you've got to pick the correct story options to get these two characters, John and Jane, together. The plot quickly spirals out of control, this guy Thresher becomes a sex pervert, narrators get their asses beat on camera, it doesn't really matter all that much. The gameplay really only goes as far as you watching the still images playing out and making selections to see where the story goes from there. It's not really that crazy. In essence, it's basically a visual novel without text, which is something that LRG definitely tried to capitalize on in their new promotional art. I feel like trying to explain all the weird shit that happens in this game is kind of a meaningless endeavor. The old AVGN video already goes over pretty much everything you'd want to talk about, though I do find that that video is somewhat misleading. James Rolfe only showed off one route in that video, so for years I kind of assumed there was more... game in there? More routes that lead into different stories? But this isn't actually the case. The whole storyline where Thresher tries to get Jane to strip for him, then chases her around, that's the only actual route in the game. Any choice you pick that doesn't lead into that story gets you dinged by the narrator, then bounced back to the last menu you left off at. This is a very odd decision, considering the option that leads into this storyline has a voice clip letting you know that you've got to be 18 if you want to pick it. Note, you must be 18 or over to take a look at this decision. You want to finish this game, little Billy? Sorry kid, that's a privilege reserved for us adults. What an honor. The game is duct taped together by one joke, that every choice you pick is wrong and the narrator yells at you about it for 20 minutes. Now see how your sick curiosity led Jane into this mess? What kind of perverted monster are you? 
You filthy, degenerate ape man! How could you pick such vile story routes? Never in my years on this earth, never in the foul recesses of Bible Black and its elk have I ever seen such putrid choices. So then he dings you for points and tells you that your lack of game is a skill issue. Kinda gives off Grandpa doesn't know what a video game is energy to me. Literally the only joke I found funny in the game is when you pick the option where Jane actually gets the job and Thresher's dialogue makes it very clear that this isn't the intended story development. Then it is real! I got the job, Mr. Thresher! I mean, Mark, how can I ever thank you? Please, don't worry about thanking me. I just want us to work as closely together as the dear Lord will permit. See you at four. I think the only other thing of note that wasn't shown in the AVGN episode was the weird scene where John and Jane fumble their initial meeting and then keep imagining themselves as racial stereotypes. What do you got in mind, cowboy? Oh, maybe go to my place? You know, hang out, have a beer, get laid, you know. Get laid? <laughs> You're gonna need some help in that department. What do you mean? Very odd. But that's really all there is to Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. There's maybe like two hours of content in the entire game. As far as weird DOS trash goes, it's honestly rather blasé. Calling it the worst game of all time is a joke in and of itself. I play worse garbage on this channel alone. So, when a definitive edition of a game like this is scheduled to drop back in 2021, gets delayed for two and a half years, and then still feels undercooked upon release, you've gotta wonder just what the fuck went wrong behind the scenes. I'm sure that COVID was an issue, I won't even argue against that, but they revealed this game in June 2021 and they expected to have it out within six months. I get the impression that they expected a quick turnaround on the project, only for the whole thing to come immediately flying off the rails. In the bonus content that makes up the definitive part of this release, one of the devs talks about how it took him like a whole year to upscale all the images in the game with AI. That kind of AI usage was still kind of in its infancy until like mid-2022 as far as I'm aware, so that seems like a bit of a late addition to the game, but I can't really say for sure. On top of that, they threw in the Plumb the Depths minigame, which is a little tongue-in-cheek dungeon crawler mode. This was, honestly, a bit of a disappointment for me. <laughs> the trailers made this look a little more involved than it ended up being, but it's basically just a glorified menu for unlocking the bonus content. Most of said bonus content on offer here is interviews with LRG people, gaming historians, and oh hey, they even got the big man himself, James Rolf, in for one of these. <laughs> to be honest though, I find most of this stuff to be pretty useless. The most substantive stuff in here is probably the interviews with Jean Basson, since she actually shares some personal anecdotes about the making of the game. But more so than that, they also include a 19 minute deep dive into the game from Good Bad Flicks, which was a YouTube video released six months before the game was. And it's a good video, don't get me wrong, it really gets into the behind the scenes stuff and even features statements from Michael Anderson, the creator of the original game. The picture that's painted here is that Anderson just wanted to experiment with making a game during the FMV era. He got some people together, shot footage on weekends, did the whole thing as stills because that much FMV footage would run like dog shit on PCs from the time, and they shipped it. Production seems like it was pretty on the level and the whole thing was basically done for shits and giggles. Everything else is the LRG talking heads trying to explain the context behind the game's creation and their own histories with the game which all feels somewhat speculative and not very useful to someone that's already familiar with the game. Like, fuck, it's super weird to hear them talk about CD-ROM technology like it's the fucking Gilgamesh tablets or something. Apparently that's the entire idea behind this version of the game, to throw in a bunch of bonus content explaining the context of the game's release. But I don't think they're doing a great job of that here. This all kind of reminds me of the opening of the Disaster Artist movie where James Franco got all his buddies lined up to explain their own personal reactions to the room for... whatever reason. It really just comes off like a puff piece to me. There's some kind of interesting stuff here about the behind the scenes of the Definitive Edition itself, but it's utterly baffling to me to start up the game only to get hit with a 7 minute video where the LRG people talk to you about game preservation. You know, we're, we're, we're making this game readily available again. And I think we should, because it's important. Remember the bad parts of your history. Just remember them in context. I think this is a good context to engage this game. When you go to a museum, not everything there would have been considered high art at the time of its release. We understand this, and plumbers is certainly not high art. 
but it's a part of our culture, right? And it represents something that was really unusual for the console space. There's a strong argument for the preservation of the worst games ever made being just as important as the best games ever made. Now, I've wanted to do this video for years, literally since the re-release was first announced. I knew I wanted to talk a little about the absolute state of plumbers don't wear ties preservation, but I honestly didn't expect LRG themselves to just go there, and right off the bat even. The footage you're seeing here is a stream I did of the original DOS version of the game back in 2020. This version of the game was discovered in 2017 by a Reddit user named PsychoGiraffe who found it listed in a library over in another state from where he lived. He got a guy to check it out from the library and mail it over to him, then uploaded it to the Internet Archive. It's the full game, the menus are different from the 3DO version and you can't skip cutscenes like in the Definitive Edition, but it's the same game and it's available for anyone to play as long as you can get DOSBox going, which isn't nearly as hard as it sounds. All of this is discussed in the Good Bad Flicks video, I was oblivious to all of this back in 2020. But basically, this game has been pretty well known since 2009 and finally got a wide release to the public in 2017. If you wanted to play this game, you've already had a 7 year window to do so. This is a sticking point for me. The game was preserved, perfectly fine as is. I'm not going to get into any arguments about emulating the more widely known 3DO version, but it's interesting to note that said 3DO version features some different music than the DOS version, all of which are missing from the Definitive Edition. Hell, Definitive Edition doesn't even preserve the original experience 100% since they had to alter certain images because of copyright shenanigans. Oh hey, whoa, that's, that is copyright infringement right there. For me, have... this all really begs the question, is what LRG doing here actually game preservation? Is this game more preserved now that the game is available on digital storefronts with possibility of getting delisted, and as a limited number of copies for 8th and 9th gen consoles? Is it more preserved now than when an ISO dump of the literal original release got uploaded onto the internet? There's been a bit of a minor panic over digital storefronts and streaming services either going under or just straight up nuking shit off their platforms. It's a fear I've personally internalized ever since the Wii Shop channel got taken down. I, I made the mistake of not playing Lit back in the day, and now I gotta settle for a D-made mobile version with a worse art style. Thanks, WayForward. On top of that, there's also the fact that digital storefronts tend to not actually let you own the games you buy, instead offering you licenses. That means you can't resell the games you purchase, letting the publishers fuck over the secondary market and charge whatever the hell they want for their games. Did you know that Call of Duty Black Ops, a 14 year old video game, is still 40 fucking dollars on Steam? The common solution to these problems that I see get tossed around is to stick to physical media, just like in the good old days. I, I have always been a proponent of physical media. I love streaming, I subscribe to streaming services, but you gotta keep, if there's something you want, I, I think buying it physically is still the only safe bet and it not just vanishing. I still enjoy current year gaming and all the recent games coming out, but we need a balance of physical and digital because I know damn well companies will take full advantage of having us all under their thumb mm. and it can only spell disaster. LRG likes to take this narrative and run with it. They actually even use that. Oh fuck, I just bit my tongue. LRG likes to take this narrative and run with it. They actually even use it as an explicit selling point for their release of the previously delisted Scott Pilgrim game. No matter when things go right or wrong, we've been honored to bring you something physical to keep through it all. Even when the digital storefronts fade away, we will all- <laughs> It was here! I knew it! Now, clearly they're taking the piss here, but there's absolutely an element of fear-mongering in their advertising. That certainly doesn't help our ancient lizard brains when this company is exclusively trying to sell you limited edition collector's items, but I digress. The thing about physical media is that it isn't always the most practical means of experiencing media. Hey kid, you wanna play Silent Hill 2? You got 200 bucks lying around for this out-of-print PS2 game? You can argue that the game is preserved because you can still buy physical copies, but the truth is that most people aren't going to have the opportunity to own one of these things. I shouldn't even own one of these things, I should be talking this fucking thing for beer and cigarettes right now. I think there's an argument to be made that owning games, hell, owning media in any capacity is a luxury in and of itself. 
The whole concept of ownership could probably be seen as emblematic of power dynamics in every aspect of our lives, but that's that's way beyond the scope of this fucking video. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look upon my Blu-ray collection, ye mighty, and despair. Konami putting out the dog shit Silent Hill HD collection while original copies of 2 continue to get eaten alive by scalpers is an abject failure of game preservation, sure, but the only obligations of Konami and companies like them is to make their shareholders happy by making a shit ton of money off the products they put out. LRG falls outside that metric as far as I'm aware. They're privately traded, so I guess they can just do whatever they want, but their primary purpose is still to sell products. Hey, so I didn't really know where to put this into the script, but even though this video is like super inflammatory towards LRG, it should be noted that they're the ones that put out RZ, the game I championed right at the beginning of this. I, uh, I have no further comment. Liking video games is pain! <laughs> I think the unfortunate truth is that it isn't really these companies' responsibility to preserve art. It, it isn't really anybody's responsibility, really. Not even their creators. I don't think you can say this definitive edition exists solely for the sake of preservation. At most, it's a product that exists for the goof, the jape. For internet funny men like me to feed into the gaping maw of the content meat grinder and bolster a hype cycle. The thing is, the context this game exists in is shifted from being a weird little experiment in game dev to a mysterious and baffling retro game, and nowadays to a nostalgic internet equivalent of someone who's famous for being on a Jerry Springer episode. It's a little existentially terrifying for me to think that this video isn't just media talking about media, it's slipping dangerously into media talking about media talking about media territory. And I think we're all gonna be fucked up content zombies if we let that become the norm. I mean, rumor has it that Atlas is gonna be re-releasing the Persona 2 duology again. I'll probably buy it, even though any idiot can emulate these games right now in English. I'm just- I'm, I'm just so fucking psyched to consume more fucking product! So, I have a few personal anecdotes regarding this topic. A friend of mine that I've known since grade 3, his late grandpa was actually a director who created some of the funniest bad movies I've ever seen in my life. Legitimately, like, some of the shit in those movies had me in tears, but the family generally considers them a black spot in their history. Once my buddy's grandpa died, his widow was straight up gonna dumpster the film elements and VHS copies, and my buddy had to take it upon himself to save him. You can't really release these movies to a wider audience because of issues with the family still, but for what it's worth, these movies are preserved. I'm almost certain that one of these days, these movies will be available to the public. I'm eagerly anticipating it even, because I absolutely love these movies. But you can see just how easily they could have been lost forever. Similarly, my dad was actually part of the Winnipeg and Vancouver hardcore punk scenes in the 80s. I'd heard that one of his bands from back in the day had supposedly put out a demo tape, and you know, I wanted to hear it. I'll be honest, I don't really talk to my dad anymore, but I suspect that if he ever had a copy of the tape, it'd probably be long since gone anyway. So, one night after doing a lot of googling and a little bit of booze, I managed to find the damn thing in MP3 format on some fucking punk blog full of other cassette rips. It was pretty wild not only hearing that shit for the first time, but also finding out that my dad was the primary songwriter for the band. Like, I knew my dad used to play guitar, but I never really thought of him as an artist until after listening to that album. So, I gotta thank the Terminal Escape blog run by The, the Wizard, Wizard, because without his efforts, there's like zero chance I ever would have discovered this. I imagine there's hundreds of tapes on that blog, all with similar circumstances, all basically abandoned to the annals of time, but preserved on this website. I bring all this up because, like, Companies aren't swooping in to rescue these licenses or anything. The Wizard, my buddy, Psychotic Giraffe, they're preserving this stuff not for the money, but because they care about all this stuff. It's not like morally bankrupt to want to make money off your art. The system we all live in kind of forces you to want that. A lot of the stuff I cover on this channel is or was abandonware at some point. In my last video, I made a pretty bold claim about Abandonware, and I'm not gonna walk that back, but it should be noted that Abandonware may technically still be under copyright. 
but nobody actually cares enough to enforce it anymore. Ideally, you'd always want to have an option to support creators, but I really don't see anything wrong with getting your greasy mitts on a 30 plus year old video game that nobody gives enough of a shit about to charge money for nowadays. So, when a game that is, for all intents and purposes, abandonware, is pulled out of limbo and offered back to the public as a product, I don't know, it just kinda makes my fucking skin crawl. Like, fuck, these guys are literally sequel baiting in their bonus interview footage. But, you know, if this is successful, I would love to be able to look into doing more with it, you know? Uh, if there ends up being demand for a sequel, a plumber still don't wear ties. This game did not need to happen. I guess the upside here is that plumbers don't wear ties will absolutely reach a new audience. I mean, hell, the first video I ever did in this channel was on Harvester, which is one of my favorite games, and that's one I never would have known about if it hadn't been for the Night Dive re-release back in 2014. But I also think that those old ABGN episodes are still relevant to a much wider audience than LRG's consumer base, so I'm not really sure that all matters that much. The release of Plumbers Don't Wear Ties Definitive Edition is not a grave injustice against culture, sure, but LRG acting like they're a bastion of game preservation is pretty fucking skeezy, I think. But with this limited run version, it is as easy as either downloading it digitally or, preferably, buying it physically to own in your own collection as this curiosity. This isn't really a video about Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Hell, this isn't even really a video about LRG, about AVGN, or even video games specifically. Look, let's be real for a second. Physical media is not forever. Nothing is. Your cartridges, your discs, your cassettes, they're gonna rot. Your VHSs are gonna fucking break. At any moment, a protester can soup a Van Gogh, or Notre Dame can burn down. Your HDD is gonna crap out. Your SSD is gonna be dust, you're gonna be dust, I'm gonna be dust. Sooner or later, we're all gonna be worm food. Eventually, everything ends. But the people we are and the things we create, they all have meaning. They can continue to have meaning for generations to come as long as we're able to keep their memory alive. And I don't think an industry should have the power to arbitrate the very act of passing down our stories. Flubbers don't wear ties is a big fucking turkey. I don't enjoy playing it, but actually putting out a finished work into the world can be an absolute bitch. I think being able to get something out there at all means a lot. These people all did it, and they did it just for the sake of doing it. The fact that we're still talking about this game in any capacity is a testament to how something so weird and low-key can still connect with us in ways we never really expected. So whatever, buy the game or don't, I don't give a shit. Maybe just go rewatch the old AVGN episode, because it's a lot funnier than the game itself. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties is kind of a freak case in terms of its enduring notoriety. There's a lot of weird and obscure works of art out there that'll never get this kind of treatment because they weren't lucky enough to get featured in one of the most important and influential series for the development of internet video as an art form. This isn't a call to stop purchasing video games and to fuck off to a cabin in the woods with a 15 terabyte SSD full of pirated games for the rest of your days. But, if you're gonna take anything away from this video, just remember that corporations are not your friend. If you care about something, it's up to you to keep it around. <laughs>